Yeah. I'm calling the meeting to order. We're going to do a roll call first. Adam. Good evening, Adam Sokolowski, president. Uh, chairman here is here. John. John Staberski is present. Robert. Present. David. Yep, I'm here. Alex. Here. Jen. Jennifer Remillard here. Okay. We have everybody. <clears throat> Executive session with attorney Costa, Tolman and Costa, pursuant to Mass General Law 30A. 21A3, Zoning Board of Appeals will enter into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, namely Bordanini, Bordanani, is that what it, how it's pronounced? Crowley versus South Deerfield DJ Series, LLC, ETAL, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Ho uh, Housing Court, Department of Trial Courts of Western Massachusetts. Docket number 21 H 79 C B 000088 and South Deerfield DJ DG series LLC versus Sadowski ETL Commonwealth of Mass Land Court docket number 21 Miss Miska M I S C A 000092 M D V uh, as chairman, I declare this meeting, an open meeting would be detrimental to the litigation position of the public, to the public body. So we're gonna go into executive session. Okay, am I, am I correct in my procedure, Mr. Costa? You are. Okay. Does he, we, he comes I, back after? I'm sorry, what, Jen? You just need to say that you're gonna come back to the... <laughs> Yes. Oh, after we, um, I guess we're going to, are we going to end discussion with um, the executive session? Is that how we terminate it? Terminate it as an ending of discussion. And then we'll open it up to um, continuation of public hearings for Dale Whitney and public hearings for mm -hmm. the Saxon Science special permits. Yes. Okay. Am I doing it the proper way, Mr. Costa? Yes, all you need to do is just state that you'll be coming back into open session at the conclusion of the executive session. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Mr. Can Decker? Can you ask Mr. Costa uh, to clarify what is said in executive session, what can be repeated, what can't be repeated? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes. So the purpose of an executive session is to discuss certain matters that the legislature has determined uh, would be detrimental if discussed in an open session. So there are 10 purposes under the Massachusetts Open Meeting Law for which municipal public bodies, including in this case, your Zoning Board of Appeals, can go into an executive or a closed session. Generally, the things that are said in closed session are said in closed session for a reason, because they're not meant to be discussed openly. If they were discussed openly, again, they could have a detrimental impact on, in this case, the board's litigating position. Um, some of the things said in executive session, uh, some phrases, some sentences, some uh, statements that are made uh, are statements that may have already been made openly. And so not every word, every, every phrase, every sentence, every statement in an executive session by virtue of it being said there uh, cannot be repeated or is privileged. But the general, um, the general discussion that's had in an executive session is meant to remain in an executive session. Uh, Mr. Costa, John Staberski. Yes. Uh, Chair, there is no legal prohibition from, uh, from any uh, members revealing things that are discussed in executive session, is there? Uh, there is no legal prohibition, that is correct. Okay, I have a question. I see uh, Mr. Anston on the screen. Mark? Anston? Yeah, Mark Aston, yes. Yes. Uh, can I ask who you are? I'm with uh, Red Roof Inn, reference to the sign. No, uh, uh, we're, we're supposed to have these people. Bernie? Yes. It's okay. 
I'm going to put you guys into a separate room yeah. okay. and people can hang out. You, nobody will hear you. It's not recorded. People can stay in this meeting. And when you're done with your executive session, you're going to leave that me meeting and come back here. I know we haven't done this before. So um, as soon as you let me know, I will put you, um, the board members, Attorney Costa, um, into executive session. So as a follow up on my question, Bernie. Yes, Mr. Decker. Uh, the purpose of executive session is basically to go over strategy relative to the court litigation. Okay. And the people that are going to be in it, what you've established, if I understand it already, not you, but somebody else that there's no prohibit, nobody's prohibited from, from saying anything that was in there. So I just wonder what the purpose of going to executive session is if, uh, People that are going to be sitting there uh, are going to turn around and say everything is said. Mr. Costa, would you like to respond? So um, all I can say is this. So re representing a municipal public body, or for that matter, representing a municipality, uh, is much like representing a, a corporate entity. In fact, municipalities are really municipal corporations. That's how they're established. So when an attorney represents a corporation, the attorney represents that corporation typically through its board of directors, let's say, and represents the public body, represents that board of directors when it meets as a public body. The attorney doesn't represent any individual member of that board of directors, doesn't <laughs> represent any individual shareholder of the corporation, but represents the entity. And the attorney's uh, job and obligation is to uh, zealously represent, particularly in litigation, represent that entity and to preserve all privileges that, that might be available in connection with that representation. That attorney, and I, again, I liken this to municipal government, cannot control what any one member of the board of directors does. Those members, by virtue of having taken an oath to be a member of the board of directors, uh, have certain responsibilities um, in their capacity as such. And whether they fulfill those responsibilities, whether they shirk those responsibilities, whether they choose to do things that would be contrary to the interests of the board of directors. That's between them and the board of directors. That's between them uh, and their ethical, uh, moral responsibilities. I can't, as counsel, uh, tell them what they can or can't do as an individual, no, any more so that I could tell any shareholder of that corporation. So in representing municipalities, um, I can tell you that these executive session privileges exist for a reason. They exist to allow the municipal government and the various public bodies that comprise the municipal government, allow it the opportunity to go into a closed session to discuss, in this instance, litigation, where the discussion of that litigation or the discussion of strategy in that litigation, if it were discussed openly, if it were made known to the public generally, could have an adverse impact on that board's litigating position. Whether individual members of the board who attend that executive session choose to then relay that information outside of the executive session to members of the public. Obviously that is contrary to the purpose for which the executive session is called. That is contrary to the purpose for which the executive session privilege was created. But I cannot control that. I cannot control that member. I don't represent that member and I don't represent that member's duties and obligations to the public body, to the town. Um, that's between the member and the body the member and the town. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I move that we're gonna go into executive session at this time. Okay, so it'll just give me a minute while I have to, to do that. Bernie, you gotta quote the particular section, pending rec, rut. I read, it, I, I read it, Bob. Oh, you did, all right, just wanna yeah. make sure. Am I correct in what I did, Mr. Costa? You are. You have to bear with me. I don't know. I've never been through this before. Now accept it and you can go into the room. Do you see we it? So we have the roll call first. Do we have the roll call? Yes, we did. Okay. 
And I don't see an invitation to another room yet. Uh, okay, it should be room one. Let's see. Yeah, you have to send the invite, right? I assigned you guys to that room. Jennifer, was there a roll call vote that you have recorded? Yes. Yeah, so I got okay. Adam present, myself present, John present, Robert present, uh, David present, Alex present, and Jen present. Yeah, it's on the screen now. Just you got to click the join. Uh, Bernie, uh, as, a, as a point of information, I think you just called the roll to see who was present. You did not vote. We did not take a vote as to whether uh, we are uh, voting to go into a, a an executive session. I, I believe from what Adam has told me that that's a decision that I make, not anyone else. I, am I right, Adam? Where's Adam? I think he went into the room. I think, Bernie, what happens is you make the determination, but I think the board has to vote to go into executive session and it has to be a roll call, but I'm not an expert. Well, if you go into the room and if they did it wrong, you can come back out. I'm going to hit join. I'm not sure the room. How do I get into the room? Oh, I didn't add you before. Oh my gosh, sorry. Missed your, maybe I had to scroll down. Sorry about that. That's all right. What are you listed as? What's your name, David? DMP? D D V I don't know. My 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 email is D V D P T T R, but I'm not sure what is it is it you, you get me wrong, I think. Okay, yeah, that'd be me. Okay, that's why I didn't recognize it. Ah, I see. I don't yeah, didn't occur to me. Okay. That's Did you me. Get it? Oh no, let's see. Assign. Don't hit it yet. We have to take a roll call or vote for the thing, Jen. Okay. That's correct. Well, we go into executive session for the purpose um, of the seems like I'm in litigation. Am I in? No, you're not. They have to do a roll call, David. So he <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Did they all leave? Uh, Bernie doesn't know how to get in, in and out of rooms. So Ad uh, Adam is helping him. Out. Bernie's Bernie's in the main session. Okay. Okay, we all set? There you go. Okay, we're taking a um You need a motion. So moved to go in executive session for the purpose of discussing communication. Okay. We have a second. Seconded by Adam Sokolowski. Okay. Um now, the, now we now, now the we, have, we hit the button leave and go to the other room. Oh do a roll call vote. We do a yep. roll call vote. Now yep. Adam. Where's Adam? Which Adam. one? Me or Mr. Uh, Costa? Adam, uh, Mr. Costa, Attorney Costa. Yes. Okay. So the roll call vote is taken now by which members? Oh, the, 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 the members, the regular members of the board, the, the board as comprised. Okay. So uh, Attorney Costa, does that include alternates? No, so so generally, while while alternates may be permitted to participate in board discussion, when the board meets from meeting to meeting, um, public hearing or public meeting, regardless, the membership is the membership. It's the regular members of the board. Alternates are not members of the board unless they're required to step in due to one of the reasons enumerated in the bylaw and in the statute. So, just as uh, you know, a point of inquiry. Uh, uh, Alex Hirschenreiter, uh, he sat on the DJ, uh, the Dollar General uh, hearing, but he's an alternate member. So does he, or is he part of this, um, the, the executive session or not? So yes, he can be part of the executive session, but for purposes of voting, for example, to go into the executive session, um, if there's a full membership of the board available, then he wouldn't be a voting member. And uh, Jennifer Remillard, she was not part of the hearing, but she's an alternate. Is she... Admit, uh, allowed into the executive session? 
Yeah, so there's, there's really no sort of continuation from the public hearing originally. Uh, members that came on, even if they came on after the, the, the uh, proceeding was complete and a decision had rendered, they would still be permitted to participate. But uh, if it's an alternate member, that alternate member wouldn't be voting on, on, on matters that are now before the board. Um, I do have a question for you, Attorney Costa. When we go into executive session as an alternate member who is named in both lawsuits, are we allowed to at least give feedback? Yes, so certainly the alternate members can participate. I generally leave it to the discretion of the chair, but I, I can't remember the last time the chair didn't permit alternate members to participate in an executive session. It's simply the question of whether they have voting authority. Thank you. Any other questions? Can okay. we move forward with the vote, please? Yes. Um, the vote yes means we're going to uh, proceed into executive session. So, Mr. Sokolowski. Yes. Yes. I vote yes. John. Yes. Uh, Mr. Decker. Yes. And Mr. Potter. Yes. All right. So, we have five yeses. So, we're going to enter into executive session. So now we're going to go back to the room deal. Is that what we're going to do? Okay. Bernie, do you want to invite the, the two yes. alternate as? Uh, yeah, if, if we need to, do we need to invite them? They're invited uh, to go in if they would like to. That's up to them. But but the people you're going to invite in, you, normally you have it part of the record. Um, when you go into executive session, if you're going to, if it was a school committee meeting you would invite the superintendent in or the business manager okay so we're going to invite alex and jen to be part of our meeting that's correct so spoken thank you mr decker yeah okay you're all calling a vote uh adam adam I vote. yes john yes adam yes for a 10 minute recess um robert yes robert, yes and david Yes, David. Yes. So we're going to take a 10 minute break um, right around 7 30. Does that sound about right? 7 35. <laughs> okay, 7 35. Thank you. Well, let me just take a quick roll call and make sure we have everybody here. Adam? Yes, Adam present. I'm here. Uh, John? Yes. Robert? Robert Decker. Mr. Yes. Yes, Decker. And David. Present. Okay. We got um, Alex and Jen by chance yes. here. Are they here? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. So uh, we're going to, we got a couple of things we have to cover here first. Um, comment was review on the votes of the minutes of the previous meetings. Meetings. Has everyone had a chance to read them over? I would like to uh, compare the video to some of the to the minutes. Okay. Bob J Decker says he wants to compare the minutes. Um, I think we need to put that on hold. Can some of these issues are in litigation right now? We want to make sure it's correct. Do I have a, a consensus that that is uh, what we want to do? I make a motion. We table the minutes until the next meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Let's take a quick vote on that. That was Bob Decker that seconded. Okay. Yes, I'm Adam made the motion. Okay. Adam in favor. So in favor of the table. Ta <coughs> table. Yes. Uh, I agree. Yes. John. Yes. Robert. Yes. And David. Potter. Where's David? Muted. I'm sorry, yes. Yes, okay, unanimous, table to vote. Okay, um, reveal mail, I don't have any new mail. <laughs> Topic is continuation of public hearing for the application submitted by Dale Whitney for a special permit to change the use of 250 Greenfield Road to a multi-dealer antique and collectible store. Do I have someone here that represents uh, this. You do. It's me. There we are. <laughs> thank you. I'm, okay. I'm Dale. All right. Thank you, Dale. Um, 
if you're going to speak, please, uh, I, well, all the board members, we ask that you give your name before you speak and be recognized so we don't talk over each other. Okay. Okay. Thank Dale you. Whitney. So, I think you have the floor, Miss Whitney. Okay. I'm here for uh, the final to get uh, the permit to be able to open the antique shop at 250 Greenfield Road. Um, I have met and sent in all of the appropriate paperwork that needs to be sent to the town. And we're just waiting for the approval from you. Okay, do we have any, do I have questions from any of the board members? Mr. S Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Question, has the Board of Health signed off on the uh, sewage disposal system? No, they have not because they cannot do a um, Title V until the frost is out of the ground. I have contacted um, two different places that do it and both of them said the same thing that they were not able to do that until April or May. Okay, um, I'm sorry, um, Bob, our building yeah. inspector is also in the meeting. Bob, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, Bob. I just want to recognize you that, that you're here. Any comments on that, Bob, since you're dealing with that uh, issue of uh, septic? I just know that um, I would look at it more. I wouldn't give an occupancy until the to the Title V is done and approval from the Board of Health. The and Board the of Health on the... On the Title V and the septic okay. system. Okay. And the this, this special permit is for retail sales over 4,000 with, with or without outdoor sales. Just so everybody's aware, that's what I sent her there for. So. What's the 4,000? Oh, name 4,000 square feet or bigger. Oh, okay. 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 That's Bob. And that was the only response because we yeah, have I'm to, sorry. Yeah. We have to have the scribe do this and it really is helpful, especially if some people are listening just on the uh, audio part, uh, uh, audio portion of this meeting. So it's helpful to them. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Dale. Um, this is Dale Whitney, and uh, I understand that I will have to have an occupancy permit um, prior to opening, and I've already contacted someone. It's um, and it is the person right across the street and I can't think of their name. I talked to Bosley and uh, the one right across the street from us. Oh, oh, to Greg's, to Greg, Greg Gardner. Yes, Greg's, yes. Okay, that was the chair speaking. I'm sorry, I don't follow my own rules. Uh, okay, anyone else have comments, questions? Yes. Oh, oh, Mr. Decker, I think you were next. Oh, I, she already answered my question. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, then, John, I think you were next. John? Yeah, my preference, and I, you know, and, and not, I'm just one person on this board, but I would like, before we vote, I would like to make sure that applicants have uh, all their other approvals in hand uh, rather than make our decision contingent upon uh, the approvals of other boards in town. I just I think we're kind of the, the, the last entity that that approves things as opposed to being one of the first or second. So I don't know how other board members feel, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't have any particular, you know, issue with this particular with this application, but I but I'd want to make sure everything is complete before we start awarding special permits. OK, Jennifer uh, Garnett, please respond to that because we've been talking about this. Jennifer sure. Garnett. It's Gannett. Gannett, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say G because they get it wrong all the time. Jennifer G, <laughs> I'm sorry. So we're looking at getting, you know, um, complete packets before they go before the board. However, I do think that that can be a condition that the, the ZBA puts, a, you know, upon approval for whatever board like that it gets the septic design done because sometimes it's not something that gets reviewed until there's a building permit. So it's not anything that you can predict ahead of time, John, um, or, or, or say you're gonna wait to make a decision before that um, is determined with that 
particular thing. Um, however, we are looking at um, tightening up the process in Deerfield for when we take in applications to make sure that they're complete before they go the, before the board. Bob, do you have anything to say about that? Uh, hang on a second. We got uh, Adam, I think it was next. Adam? Oh, sorry. Well, Mr. Waldron can finish on her comment and then I can go. I have some questions for the applicant. Okay, Bob? I Yeah, I don't see where the approval of the, I mean, I'm speaking on for the Board of Health here, but uh, I, I wouldn't give an occupancy unless the septic system or the on-site disposal system was okayed. So I don't know if that affects the special permit or not. I mean, I, I don't feel it does, but that's just my opinion. I'm not. Okay, I think Adam was next. Adam, suck a lot. Well, I mean, before we worry about approving this, we got to kind of dive into if there's any abutters that want to uh, talk about it, what these outdoor retail sales are going to be like, if the yard's going to be cluttered, what changes to the building, et cetera. I'd like to have the uh, applicant uh, go over that. We are going to be doing special, uh, holding Dale. special events. This is Dale, Dale Whitney. Oh, thank you. Um, we are going to be holding special events in regards to um, Wounded Warrior Project, um, the homeless shelters, to raise money for the community. And when we do that, I will be getting a permit for that event. And it would be held towards the back of the property. And there will be nothing left outside. I want to let you know that we will, we pride ourselves on keeping our property looking um, neat and clean and kept up. And we've never had a situation where we've had so much property to do that to, but I have all, it's been mainly Main Street and um, roads that did not have the, the grounds that this one does. But our preference is to keep it neat and clean at all times. There will not be things left outside that would look like somebody just had a tag sale or anything like that. Okay. Does that help? John, you were next. Uh, Ms. Whitney, John Kowarski speaking here. Uh, is, do you intend to have this uh, facility be similar to uh, your operation in Greenfield? Yes. Or will it be substantially different? It'll be the basic. No, it'll be the same. Yes. And are you replacing it or is this a... No, it's a second location. Okay. And we have, um, th this is Dale Whitney again. It's it's going to be similar, but yet it's going to be a higher scale. We have um, people and dealers from Boston and also from New York City that are looking to come up and uh, join our group. So our, we're looking to to be more upscale and um, have the quality high. Okay. okay. Uh, and, and, and any other questions that we have? Okay, Ms. Whitney, I have a question for you. Where is your existing place right now? 122 Main Street in Greenfield. It's almost the same size, only it's three floors. It's 16,000 square feet. Bernie, it's the old furniture building? It is, it's the old Lazy Boy furniture building. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we are gonna be putting a new awning in. <laughs> Don't let that sway you. <laughs> okay, any other, any other questions or comments by board members? Do I have a second for any kind of operation we want to go into here? Anyone want to make a comment? We want to Adam? hold up. Yes, Adam. Well, we should. We have a public hearing open. Does Jen have anybody from the public or butters that want to comment on this proposal? Nobody has their hand up. I do have one question because it wasn't on a plan. If that's okay, Bernie. Yes, go ahead, Jen. So. Um, when you said the sign was going to be the same, except for that it was going to have an additional border, was that to increase the size of the sign with the border, or was the border within the existing sign size? It's going to be the same size that would fit into the opening. Whoops. There you go. Into the opening that's there now. And I have a couple of designs that I'm looking at because I want it to 
maintain the character of the building. So uh, the finished pro product, I can send you if you'd like uh, to have you review it prior to. Um, but I have a couple of designs. I'm just trying to find the one that I think that fits the building the best. Yes, I think that that would be something that the board <clears throat> as being a condition of the permit saying that you would get to see the um, final copy that it's the same size and um, dimensions as the existing sign absolutely that's up to bernie and the board okay we have a crossroads here do we um continue this meeting later on when we get the full information do we take a vote on this now do i have anyone with suggestions of how we want to proceed here Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I would suggest that relative to the sign, that as long as it doesn't exceed the square footage of the current sign, I wouldn't have any objection at this point. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised that you don't have any neighbors that are complaining about all this with, with people 1,500 feet as a crow flies. Uh, so concerned with other things that are happening 15, 1700 square feet down the road or linear feet. They've been very vocal in the last few months on other things. So I, uh, I have had some experience in this building a number of years ago. My wedding reception was held there in 1970. Oh, my word. And I spent quite a few hours uh, on the other side of the linear bar in there over the course of time it's a nice building and i don't know how well kept up it is on the inside the biggest problem we ever had with the place was the fact that the the board of health requirements you know should have been addressed 50 years ago with the toilets they were insufficient toilets so and if that's taken care of i don't have any objection any other comments? So how, uh, do I have anyone that wants to um, make a motion that we accept this or deny well, it? Or well, hang on a minute. Take it down the road or Adam, go ahead, Adam. Well, I mean, the proper procedure is we would have to pull the board and see if we want to, you know, this is the same type of special permit that we just went through. Yeah. If it meets the criteria. Yep. And then if we want town council and our administrative tasks uh, staff to to draft an uh, approval with conditions, if we have any, uh, hours of operation, traffic flow, um, all none of those things have really been clearly addressed in very much detail. I mean, I don't know if the board members want, you know, want to have uh, traffic studies or environmental impact things, or they're they're just good with this application as it sits. Um, or uh, and we want to instruct council to draft up a, a or, or town hall staff to draft up an approval for us to to take up at our April meeting. Um, you know, I, I think it's nice to see a building continue to be used. I, I think that that's good. But, you know, we don't have any impact on we don't have any information from the uh, applicant on, you know, how many people are going to be going there, how large these people, uh, how large these events are going to be. Um, how frequent these events are going to be, if it's just going to be a regular retail store, you know, none of that's been addressed in this hearing, you know, and, and we have people that have been very critical of this board about, you know, just taking things on face value and whether we, um, whether we can just grant these special permits because um, we take the applicant on face value or whether or not we should be challenging the applicant or asking for peer reviews and those such things. Okay, Ms. Whitney, you had your hand up. Ms. I Whitney? do. This is Dale Whitney. As um, under general rule of thumb, we will be open every day from 10 to 530. And that is what we are now uh, on Main Street of Greenfield. When I say a special program, it is, there's a back part of the property that has a loading dock to it that goes down into the back. And we may have a couple of tents set up on the back, but it would be directing people to the back part of the interior of the property. So it's not going to be like it's going to be a huge um, outdoor extravaganza. It's just going to be a way to funnel people into the area that is being collected for the um, 
for the program. It's it's a part of a nonprofit that's renting from Whitney Hill in order to help um, the people of the community and so on and so forth, where talents people can come and make donations and uh, have it go towards benefiting the community. A little bit separate. It's like I said, they're renting from Whitney Hill. It's just a, a nonprofit section of it. That is where these are coming from. Um, it's not going to be a huge extravaganza. And a matter of fact, I think we covered it on the planning board side. Um, Bob, were you in that meeting where we talked about traffic flow? And because there was an, ex, an exit and an entrance on both ends, that they were not worried about um, having it have a big effect? Yeah, uh, Bob Walden, building inspector. I was on the planning board. Um, they were fine with it. Yeah, that's how I remembered it. Um, yeah. Th yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't really request any traffic study. I mean, it, I get. I guess it was more a question of you're you're not anticipating a huge amount of traffic coming in no. and out of there on a daily basis. No. <clears throat> no. It, I mean, Jennifer was also in the planning board hearing. If she has anything yeah. to add, so. and we did talk about that in depth, and um, the finals saying on that was that they didn't feel that it would be any different than what Douglas Auction has now or Yankee Candle has or anything like that. It's it's constant flow. Um, it's not that everybody's going to come at three o'clock and then have to leave at four o'clock. It's a constant flow. So there's there's not a mass exodus or, or a mass um, coming in. It would be a staggered thing throughout the day. Adam, so I can ask you with a question. Yes, Adam, so so yes. it would be, you know, so like, like a retail location where a car would come in and a car would come out and a car would come in, but you wouldn't have like 100 cars coming in at once. No, uh, uh, Dale Whitney. Um, yes, absolutely. Okay. What about any uh, vegetative barriers or fencing for a uh, view of what's going on there? Is that part of your plans at all? That has not been brought up by anyone. The only thing I can guarantee that we're going to be replacing the shrubs in the front of the building because they are causing some uh, discoloration in the siding because we're going to be painting the building. Um, so there's going to be a lot of maintenance done to the outside and cleaned up and uh, by a professional um, company. But there isn't any barriers or anything that's... Um, been required by anyone so far. Okay, Adam, we have another question. When these tents are erected, what kind of square footage are these tents going to be? 10 by 10. And how many of them? Probably two okay. for paperwork and so on and so forth, where people want to pick up information about the activity that we are holding, then they can get the information. Um, I was just it's not like a registration. I was just concerned, Adam, again here, I was just concerned because their close proximity to the railroad tracks and the drainage ditches there, if there were, you know, 60 by 40 tents up all summer with with uh, water running off of them during thunderstorms no. and that large parking lot, if there was any concerns about stormwater runoff from the no. planning board. No, there will the not be anything no, like that. The planning if we board did, no concern about that. No, if we if we did have something, it would be like I said, I would get a permit prior to, and if it wasn't uh, agreeable by the town, then it wouldn't happen. So okay. it, but I do not foresee anything like that happening. Okay, thank you, um, Adam. You brought up a uh, chair. Uh, you brought up a good point. Um, this is section fifty three twenty. And we have six criteria that we have hold, held other people accountable to. And I think, in all honesty, Adam, I think you're right that we need to go through these um, to be consistent with all with all groups. Uh, we can't just let one go because we think it's going to be a good idea. Uh, we should probably address all of these. Does the board understand what I'm talking about? Mr. Decker? Yes. Uh, Mr. Staberski? Is this a is this a motion or a vote or no? Just I, I'm trying to get a, an idea of if if this is an idea we go down this route or not. I think we should, but that I'm only one of five members. 
Well, I think you can ask the applicant uh, to, uh, to, to go through those criteria. What it, What is it that we're talking about? I'm looking at the application paperwork now. What is it? I don't think you've seen that. We have a section in our uh, our bylaws for special permits, and it's uh, 5320, and there are uh, six criteria that we we have to follow in uh, in reference to issuing a special permit. You want me to go through these quickly for you, or I you think wanna... I, I think 5320, uh, the social economic. Correct. There's six traffic flow. Traffic uh, flow and safety. Right. Parking and loading. We've already. Um, we did that with the planning board. Um, and, you know, I want to say traffic flow that we contacted the police department on that. Actually, who, um, Jen, yeah. I, yeah, I have a question um, about the parking. Um, the plan that was submitted to the planning board and then also submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals um, shows parking that I don't think the planning board addressed like, you know, that you were going to chalk draw or they, because it's on gravel. It's not on right. the back part. Yeah. Um, and there's plenty of it. I'm not worried about that. I'm thinking also of, of maybe making a condition of when um, the septic has to be addressed because in conversation just about this in town hall, it seems to be that that maybe where the septic is is underneath where some of the parking was so i would think that that would need to be a condition upon approval of the septic system that a new parking plan is is set forth because you right bob you wouldn't need you wouldn't be able to have the parking there um yep. but i still think uh, that there's going to be plenty of parking um, yeah. yeah may bob i answer Walden, bob Walden, the building inspector from what i've gathered from the board of health agent the Leachfield is under that part of the parking lot, so that I'm not exactly sure though um, myself, but it could change the parking. Um, although it is, there is a lot of parking there, as Jen has alluded to, but we don't know how it's going to look in the end. Okay, Dale Whitney, um, there's two septic systems there, to the best of my knowledge. If you're looking at the building, there's one on the left side where the big parking is, and then where the driveway goes around the back of the building, uh, over by the, I'm so bad at this, south end of the boundary line, there is another septic tank, septic system. And when I talked to Mr. Billadu, he was saying the main one was on the south end, which is opposite end of where the big parking lot is. I think but, the question is, is that we don't know as of yet because you don't have a plan before the board. So it would make sense that they would just have an approval with a condition that says that yeah. you need to come back before the board. Yeah. With that this plan. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, John had his hand up. Yes, John, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Whitney, I, you know, I don't have a lot of questions for you because I'm familiar with your business in Greenfield. I, I uh -huh. have I have an office not too far away from there, so I've, I've seen it and, and mm -hmm. been with it for, for uh, several years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you're not here with a lawyer or anybody representing you, and you're trying to do this yourself. Um, but one of the things that we do as a board is in order to uh, uh, grant a special permit, we have to evaluate these six conditions, six, mm -hmm. six criteria that that Chair Sadowski just recently referenced. Um, I am thinking that it's probably better form, and I hate to put you off, but to continue this public hearing for one more meeting, for you to look at those and go through those for us in each category. One is parking and traffic, I think, and. Uh, and the social and economic uh, effect. And, and you'll see those, some don't have any relevance whatsoever, but some mm -hmm. are things we need to concern ourselves with. And it's how we base our decisions as to get, do provide a special point. I've gone through all those in my head because I'm, I'm familiar with your operation. Right, right. A lot of other people aren't and we have to do it legally. So mm -hmm. I don't know how the other board members, I hate having to continue this again. Me too. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm thinking 
and and maybe during this month and this is in response to Mr. Sokolowski's kind of uh, his his statement is that we ask the, uh, the, the someone from the town to prepare a, a letter, uh, an approval letter that we can review next meeting as well, and just satisfy ourselves that the six um, that, that the six criteria are met and that we have the adequate uh, conditions. And Jennifer, you are nodding, you're shaking your head. So I'm yeah. trying to do that. No, the town's not going to take that on as we're sending you an approval letter. That's something with whatever Miss Whitney and her um, expertise of, you know, if she hires her, her design, this, you know, people, engineers are going to present to the board and the board's going to say, yes, they meet those criteria. She has done the traffic and you know spoke to the police department she's presented us with parking we can put in a condition saying that we want to see this parking um once it comes back to the board after the septic is is done we've talked about the signage the um social economic it's like it's going to bring business and um i mean i think that there is enough that between i mean my opinion it's up to the board um between last meeting and this meeting but it's not something that I feel comfortable and Bob, please speak up. You're the building inspector, you're the code enforcement officer, um, you know, that we want to put in writing saying that we're, we're saying this, it's, it, this is why it's a special permit before the zoning board of appeals um, for you all to make that decision. We're looking at certain criteria for building permit for septic. I'm looking for complete applications, making sure that it meets signed bylaws and et cetera, you know, that then, and it goes through those steps, but for us to have a letter to say that we're. No, I'm not asking for a letter. We have an, we have, we, we there's a, well, maybe I, maybe I misspoke. Uh, we, the chair would sign off on on our vote of approving with conditions yes. to have that opinion drafted somewhat like what attorney costa did but obviously not doesn't need to be as a detail but just to have the form we could review it and trying to get the rest of this done at one meeting rather than string it out well i think that what you could do tonight is is somebody could make a motion to approve and then you can go through what conditions that you would like to put forth and then I could draft or with, you know, the building department's help draft um, a decision for you to then approve at the next meeting. Um, so I'm kind of saying the same thing, John Staberski again, okay. uh, but, that, but, but that I would like uh, Ms. Whitney to appear before us at that next meeting and go through the six criteria for us in a structured fashion and say, I, I think this project meets criteria one because ABC. Uh, we haven't really, I don't think it's been presented to us in, in that fashion. And I don't think Ms. Whitney really knew that that's the way we do our evaluations. Um, uh, so I'm just trying to be helpful to her and try to expedite the process. Maybe if I'm not, if if the rest of the board thinks I'm I'm off base, let me know. I'm just trying to move this in, along. In, re in response to John, this does not have to be um, a 15-page dissertation. No. Um, all we're looking for is some simple things, economic. We're going to provide uh, jobs for people, and we're going to use the building. We're not looking for a lot, but we need to have something from you that you present to us so that we, we've we expected this of other people and we need to yeah. be consistent. And, and I agree. And, and I don't yeah. think that's unreasonable, you know, nope. but, I, but I don't want to issue a permit and then we get into a situation where you, now you've got conditions in it afterwards. And I think that's, that's, a, that's not a road we, that, that I want to go through, but you know, if you draw them up, come to the next meeting, and uh, I don't see really problems, but we need to have these six criteria yep. addressed to the board, and then we'll take a vote on it, and, and we'll go. Now, I think, Adam, I'll go, I'll go ahead. Miss Whitney, go ahead and respond. To okay, that. thank you, D Dale Whitney. Um, I do understand exactly what you're saying, and I do believe that we went through the majority of all these um, at the last meeting. Am I right, Jen, or did, did we leave her? Lose her? Oh, I'm here. Oh. I just 
<laughs> didn't didn't we go through these at the last meeting? Uh, maybe with uh, Adam here, maybe with the planning board, you could have went through some of them, but um, not with us. This is the first time that you've been in front of us, ma'am. Okay, then it was the planning board because these are these are the exact things that we talked about uh, in my last meeting that I went to. Talked about the planning board. Um, however, we had much time. Mr. Chair, Mr. The Mr. Decker. Um, I, I agree with uh, you and John that we need to take this issue up at the, the next regular meeting, which would be scheduled in April. And in between, we should give uh, Miss Whitney a copy of the requirements of those six criteria so she understands them fully. She has a professional engineer she's employed to in part of this paperwork. Uh, she should go over it with them or somebody else of competent jurisdiction and uh, be prepared to answer the information relative to those things at our next meeting. And uh, the other thing is a condition of the permit. Um, I wanna make sure that if and when we do grant the permit, that the septic has to be brought in line and, and further that the tents out back not to exceed two and not be over uh, uh, 10 by 10s or 200 square feet total. And- uh, yeah just so she understands that right now, but she needs to get those six different things so she can do the research. Uh, she can look at the decision we made in, in the other recent case where we made the findings and the findings are necessary for the permit to issue. And if we can't make those arguments in her favor, we won't be able to issue the permit. So that's all I got to say. Okay, so we're, now, Ms. Whit, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Ms. Whitney, I just want to let you know that, you know, I'm not, uh, I just want to ask some of these questions so we can properly support you uh, moving into town and we, we have everything in order. So, you know, I, I just, um, I, I know it's kind of a delay, but I think it would be best if um, we get a, a little bit clearer presentation with some more explanation on each of those requirements of our bylaw to make sure that you know, down the road, things don't change and abutters or, or, or things, you know, kind of turn, turn in another way. I mean, I really like uh, the way, you know, if you look across the street, the uh, self storage folks are, you know, everything's kept up very well yeah. over there. And, you know, yeah. I really hope that this building gets, you know, a coat of paint and gets used and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I think it would be, it would be best for all parties involved to, uh, work this out uh, the, the, through the proper channels. I agree, Dale Whitney. Okay, now Ms. Whitney, do you want to, um, I'm not gonna say withdraw it, but what do we say, ask for oh, a continuance? I, I con move that we continue the public hearing to our next me scheduled meeting. Okay. And, and, and would ask if uh, in, in the meantime, that uh, someone from the town, whether it's Jennifer or someone else, uh, start a draft of a vote of a of a vote for us, so we can look at it and and give our comments and uh, and and hopefully approve it. Because Ms. Whitney, I'm excited about this project for this town. Thank I you. We are an antique uh, kind of. Uh, attractive center you're going to add to it you're going to put back in service a building that you know is, is very nice architecturally and uh, and has been unused you know underutilized for, for many yeah. many years that that i'm excited yes. that you'll bring it back to its glory and hopefully uh, be a credit to the town so so thank you uh, Thank you. So you're, you're, I want you to know you're being supported by us, but we just need to go through a process. And I understand that. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it then. Second that we can vote to continue the meeting. All right. Okay. Vote. Mr. Decker. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Adam. Yes. I vote yes. John votes yes. yes. And David. Yes. Yes. Unanimous to continue the meeting to, what did we say, April? What was it, Jen? Whatever our next scheduled meeting is. Okay. Next scheduled meeting. Yep. Um, and if you have any questions, 
Miss Whitney, please. I don't know whether I can help you out or not, but I, I'm around some. I could help you some, I guess. I don't know whether I can or not. But if you have some questions on, on these th these six things, um, that I think the town office can help you out. Uh, like I said, we're not looking for a dissertation, just some general things. I do. I understand. Okay. I, I do. Okay. And Bernie, I, I'd recommend that we, that board members not assist applicants. Okay. I think it might be conflict of interest. I understand, John. I I, under, I do understand, and I think I think I already have um, I think I already have the information that's needed. It's just putting it in a different um, format for for this board um, instead of the planning board. Okay. Great. So we're going to continue our meeting till April uh, and the next meeting till April. Any okay. comments by anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Whitney. We'll see you um, in April. Um, April. April 8th. April 8th. April 8th. Perfect. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Okay. Continuation of public hearing for the application for Saxon signs for a special permit to reduce the existing sign location at nine Greenfield Road from 500 square feet to 320 square feet. Do, Bernie, we, have a rep do we have a representative from- um... Bernie? Yes. This is a new hearing, not a continuation. I didn't say, did I say continuation? Yeah, you did. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, public hearing. I meant continue our meeting is what I really meant to say. Okay. Continue our meeting for with a public with a public hearing of this application for Saxon Signs. Do we have anyone from Saxon Signs here? Yep. My name is Terry Meisner. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Would you like to present your um, your whatever you're going to do for application and for the special yep. permit? So what I'd like to do is remove the uh, sign head that is there now, which is uh, the old one is 25 foot by 20. And they want to replace it with a 22 foot by 14 foot eight <clears throat> um, sign as double face. It's a flex face, so the sign won't, you know, break or anything. It's um, you can hit it with a rock or whatever you want. It's not going to break on you. It'll be uh, internally illuminated with LEDs. It'll be more efficient than the old sign that was there and uh, <clears throat> less um, maintenance on it. Okay, I'm, I'm miscued here. I need to take a, uh, a vote off of uh, attendance of this meeting. Mr. Sokolowski, you are present. Yes, I am present. All right, I'm present. Mr. Decker, present. Present. John? Yes, I'm here still. Okay, and David? Present. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, questions? Are you uh, John Staberski, may I? Yeah, John. I have a couple questions, um, Terry. Um, are you changing the pole at all or just the sign on the top of the pole? Just the sign on top of it. The pole will remain the same. And will the sign be brighter or the same illumination uh, as the current sign? Uh, it'll be the same illumination, but it'll be actually less because it's a smaller sign. Okay. And uh, are there going to be any... Is it gonna? What's this? What, what, do you have a picture of it, or is it? Do we know what it's gonna say on the sign? Yeah, it's gonna say Red Roof In Plus. Okay. They didn't send you the layout. There I was a. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, we can see it. It's that was part of the packet. Okay. Right. Now the existing sign was grandfathered. Mr. Decker, Mr. Decker speaking. Go ahead, Bob. Was the existing sign was grandfathered in years ago? Uh, was that when uh, red when it was a? Uh, oh, I can't even think what it was now. Ramada. The pre-existing non-conforming sign. So. Bob Walden, the building inspector. I, from what I gathered, it was put up in 1979, so it's been there a long time, and it's pre-existing non-conforming sign. But if we're not going to be more aggrieved by allowing a smaller sign to go on the same pole. Well, I don't um, believe Adam Sikulski, I don't believe the last sign was was lit. 
right. I don't know. I believe it's lit. Uh, I, I, I have a recollection of it being lit. Maybe I'm wrong, Terry. You could probably correct us. Yeah, the last time it was lit, um, it probably it needs some maintenance, so it probably hasn't been lit properly in quite some time. Yeah, I would say if there was lighting, it wasn't very strong. Yeah. Yeah, the sign that's there now needs some work. <laughs> that's why they want to replace it. Okay. Um, any other comments? All right. Do we have uh, a butters with, I see there's three people here. Are those, are you gentlemen a butters? Bernie, I believe that they're with Red Roof. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, we have, uh, uh, we were amiss the last time for not asking if there are butters that have concerns. Do we have any butters signed in with concerns of this? Nobody has any hands up or any comments that I can see. This light, this sign is not going to flash, is it? No, not at all. Is it going to be illuminated all night long? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, um, this one here is under that 5320 again. But since we're just re we're reducing the, um, uh, I'm going to call it footprint or illumination, do we have to look at these six criteria again on this? Because we're talking about the same 5320 section in our um, zoning bylaws. Uh, David Potter, I think we should be looking at the same six criteria. Okay. Just as a matter of, you know, principle. Yep. Yeah, I, exactly. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, I agree with you. Okay. Um, I guess the thing is, were these items addressed in their, they didn't address them at all, I guess. They, they, they didn't, but you know what I think to uh, really kind of cut to the chase, we could, we should go through them because this is a, I think this okay. is a fairly simple special okay. permit. And I think we can run through each one of these in our in our deliberations and uh and and have findings made i mean if somebody i don't have them in front of me but if somebody has them and can just uh, uh, go through the titles we can talk i about agree them. i will john I've i have them. them i'll read them and then we'll go through them one by i don't have a problem with that john but i think we need to be i think david's right we have to be consistent with with this okay Special permit findings under section 5320 of the town code. 5321, social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal. Comments by anybody? I think one, it helps people find the facility and they're not wandering on five and 10 uh, looking for it. So I think it does have some uh, public service. I think it might attract some business to town because people, travelers on the highway will want to come to uh, uh, maybe stop in, in, in South Deerfield to, to utilize a facility. But I don't think it's, it, it's a significant factor, but it, it tilts positive, if anything. Okay. Any, anyone object to anything on this social economic community needs served by the proposal? Any objections? No. Well, I mean, Adam here, I yes. hope that their sign can attract some more higher clientele than get back to traveling than what, what it has been for the last year with COVID over there. Okay. So I assume the finding as far as I'm concerned was going to be from a general consensus is a yes on 5321. Yes. 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 This is David. Yes. Okay. 5322 traffic flow safety, including parking and loading comments by anyone. Not applicable. <laughs> well, David saying it's, it's an improvement if you're talking parking, people okay. see the sign. Yep. All right. They're not changing anything except the sign, but you're right. Okay. Um, anyone disagree with that? Anyone have an issue with um, 5322? No. Okay. Adam? Sok? Sokolowski? No? I'm fine with it. Okay. John? I'm fine. And David, you're fine with it, right, Dave? No? Yes? Um, yes. Sorry. Okay, ad adequacy of public utilities and of other public services. You're not putting any more load on this electrical system, correct? Well, no. at, least, 
With LED, yeah. you're probably going to be less than what you had before. Exactly, it'd be a lot less. Okay. Um, anyone have an issue with uh, 5323? No. Mr. Decker, no. John? No. Uh, Adam? No. David? No. Okay, that's a yes. 5324, neighborhood characteristics and social structure. Comments? Adam. Yes, Adam. Well, it is the only sign like it in the area. I mean, everything else is much lower to the ground, not illuminated. You know, Adam, I agree. If this were a new sign, I would not be in favor of it. But uh, I think uh, relatively an improved sign is better than a ratty sign and a deteriorating mm -hmm. sign up there. So uh, even though, you know, yeah, I, I tend, Adam, I tend to agree with you, John. It's but. not desirable. It's it's an improvement, and an improvement in our community because yeah. it, it's going to look a little better. This, yeah. David. Yeah, David. Thank you. Sorry, I was. Um, I, I agree. It's an improvement, and um, uh, yeah. That, yeah, that's we're it. Not, we're not judging your old sign, but it sounds like this one might be a nice, wonderful sign with positive feelings in the neighborhood. <laughs> Terry, is that okay with you? That's good with me. Okay, Mr. Decker. I'm fine with it. Okay, John. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Adam. Yes. And David. Yeah. Okay, so that one's taken care of. 5323, impact on the natural environment. Comments? Just correction, that's 5325. Oh, I'm sorry, yes, 5325. <clears throat> impact on the natural environment. Mr. Decker. Vianney. Yes, Mr. Decker. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. Shouldn't be any. In interference with the environment it should be fine it should be less than what's there today well if he's my comment is if he's using leds he's going to save a lot of energy so i think that's a positive thing yeah for sure for sure okay um anybody object to 53 25 i don't adam i don't object okay doesn't either okay and david david i'm good with it okay so that's a yes 5326 potential physical physical impact financial impact town supervision tax base and employment well if they get a better sign they're going to get uh, more clientele stopping and we're going to get more rooms tax yeah. you know the unfortunate part is if they put put a new sign up they're going to be taxed more yeah <laughs> that's well, the no, way it's it still good for us Tax yeah. to get off of that. Yes. Okay. Which we shouldn't be laughing, <laughs> but that's what happens. You improve and you pay. Okay. Uh, anyone uh, disagree with this? Anyone? Is, there, is this? I can't stop thinking about this. Um, John. I'll make a Adam, I'll make a motion to approve the permit for the new sign. Okay. We're going to take this last vote, though. Oh, Thank one you. more? Yeah. The last one 5326. Oh, uh, John, yes. Uh, David. David, I'm for it. They're all good. Okay. Adam? Yes. Bob? And myself, yeah. yes. Okay. We have five yeses for 5123, 5022, 5323, 24, 25, and 26. Do I have a motion? Adam just made it. I I'll make it again. Adam okay. Sekolowski, make a motion to approve the special permit for the for the sign at the Red Roof Inn. Are there okay. any conditions? Seconded. Second. 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 I, would, I would just uh, have a, the condition is that when the sign is replaced that it doesn't cause a nuisance or interference on Route 5 and 10. I mean, I don't know what it's gonna take to get a crane up there, but that's gonna be probably a pretty substantial construction job to get that high. I don't know, Terry, you tell me. 
Terry, how high is that now? 300 feet? No, it's uh, it's going to be 150 feet is the sign itself. Oh, so we have we probably have a crane that's probably like 180 feet. Yeah, that's no big. <clears throat> yeah, we'd, we'd probably have, we'd have one crane to, to lift and one to work out of. Yeah, that's okay. So just to, to limit, my, my only concern is to limit to limit any traffic problems or interference in the in uh, on five and ten when you when you do your work. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> we're more than likely going to be right in the parking lot of Red Roof Inn. Oh, okay. So With some. Be with some supervision for safety, I assume, correct? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. So someone will get whatever. Okay. So we got a second. Let's take a vote on this. This is vote to allow. To approve the special permit. The special permit for the SACS sign for a special permit to reduce existing sign located on route, route 5 and 10, Greenfield Road, uh, from 500 to 323 square feet. Bernie, okay. Yes, question. A suggestion um, in a condition just for the future of it that, you know, I know LED bulbs last for a really long time, but it's sometimes thoughtful to put in something in a condition that in a timely manner because of how long this sign has not looked great and it's taken them a long time to come back before the board if we put in a condition, um, if there's any damage or bulbs that are out that, that they are replaced and it's fixed within a certain time period. Just a suggestion. That's a great suggestion, Jennifer. But that would just- John, Why don't you amend the motion with the wording you want? Let, let's, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, ask uh, the applicant- Oh, oh, oh John, go ahead. Uh, uh, John, John Sibersky, go ahead. Uh, Terry, maybe it's you. If if there were to be repairs to have be done, bulb replacements, broken parts of the yeah. sign, what is a reasonable time for you all to be able to repair it if it if if it does need a repair? Usually, like two to three weeks, um, and that's usually up to you know the customer to give us a call, you know, and then we have to schedule it in. So let me say, let me suggest 30 days. How's that sound if it's two or three um, weeks? And it's also, it also depends on, you know, depend on the customer and their, um, you know, I guess their budget, you know, when they can, because it, it's a, like a, on that is a, uh, a costly repair. We so can do something some, like so, 30 days or within a written time frame from um, the business owner, you know, say something. Yeah. Um, so that the, there's a guarantee that there's some sort of response of when it's going to be fixed. Yeah. All right, uh, Adam. Here, I can remake the motion for approval and try to wrap that in if you if you want me to withdraw. Yeah, withdraw, Adam, please. And uh, Mr. Someone, John, withdraw your second. Uh, how about this, Adam? Why don't I just move to amend your motion and move to amend to add a condition? That's and, fine. And that condition would be that in the in the event that uh, the the uh, sign is damaged or not functioning that it be repaired within 30 days after written notice from the from the town to the applicant I'll second that amendment Adam will second that amendment okay any other comments um, yeah I have a comment this is David yes, David. I'm I'm curious why why is it upon our written notice? Why is it our obligation that the, the owner should know that it's not maintained or it's not functioning and they should deal with it? Um, but Adam, I guess maybe I'll answer I'll answer Go that. Um, because we would get a, the town would get a complaint and then this would give the zoning board um, a start date. We wouldn't be able to determine without notifying them what day the bulb actually went out for an enforcement. So yep. we need to give them, if someone complains to us or the building inspector notices it's out, they can shoot them a letter and then that starts the clock. Starts, yeah, okay, I get that, thank you. Mr. Sadowski, would you like us to vote on this? I'm um, just writing a quick note on this for myself so that so when I go to the office, we can make sure it's put into on in our paper paperwork.
Okay. <coughs> it's a vote to um, for uh, this special permit to reduce the existing sign from 500 to 323 square feet with conditions that it must, if there are repairs, must be re must be done within 30 days after notification. Does that sound all right? I mean, we're fancier, but that's what we're voting on. Yes, Mr. Means. Chair? Yes. Uh, this is Alex. Um, you guys should um, vote the motion or the uh, amendment then the motion. Okay. Um, we're voting to a yes means we're going to accept it and give them the special permit with conditions. Nope. No. no, you should. Okay. No. no. Um, oh. Bernie, no. Bernie, per, what, Bernie, what we need to do is vote on my motion to amend. Adam. So we'll vote on your amendment first and then the motion. That's ah, correct. okay. Got, gotcha. Okay. So we're, we're voting on the amendment by John. Adam, yes. Okay. John, yes. Bob um, Dex, yes. yes. David Potter, yes. Yes. Okay. All right. That's been accepted. So now we're going to move to accept the motion as it is whatever stated. Okay. Adam. Yes, to grant the special permit. Yes. I vote yes. John Staberski, yes. Robert Decker. Yes. And David Potter. Yes. So that's unanimous to issue a special permit for this sign with conditions. Okay, any other comments or questions? I don't know. It might be past people's bedtime. We should. It is. Joe Biden's on TV, probably. Oh, boy. Uh, jo Joey O had a question. <laughs> uh, me? Yes. yes. Yeah, well, yeah, more of a, a quick uh, comment question. Um, the and, and I'm with, sorry, this is Joe Yannis with uh, Triumph. We're the manufacturer uh, of the uh, of the sign. Uh, I was wondering about the 30 days uh, under normal conditions, simple enough, if it's a repair a face or a light or something electrical. Um, production of, in this case, of the uh, of that sign would take a little more than 30 days uh, from the day we put it into production. Now that the permit is, is in hand, it could be five or six weeks. Yeah, uh, uh, Joe, you don't have 30 days to get the sign up. You, you, sure. you, when you get the new sign installed, then if it's broken and the building inspector notifies you that it's been broken, then it would be within 30 days we'd request a repair. But if you have a legitimate reason like we can't get this part and you communicate that with our enforcement officer and you're working on it, then I think there's a lot of leeway between the build, our zoning enforcement officer and the corporation. What we don't want is two years of a sign not working. Right, right, got it. Okay, no, no problem. Thank you. You know, I, I think you're gonna, well, I think we, we all realize that, for example, like last week, if you were trying to put that sign up, I don't think anyone's gonna be standing on a 150 foot scaffolding in the wind we had. So, you know, we, I'm sure we're going to be flexible in this. And I know our building inspector will. He's, he's, Bob's pretty confident. So, we appreciate I'm sure that. we'll, it's okay. extenuating circumstances will be covered. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, everyone. Um, I move to adjourn. Okay. Seconded. Just Adam, hang on a second. Oh. Old business that we need to cover. Anything? New business. Any business anticipated within the next 48 hours? Okay. Motion. John, was that a motion from you? I move to adjourn. Okay. Adam seconded. Okay, seconded. Vote to adjourn. David, yes. Okay, hang on a second, Dave. <laughs> You want to get to bed, Bernie? Come on. I, I, I know, but I got to record all this because this has to go in there. <laughs> you said vote. Out of order. I should have went first again. Adam, yes. Yeah. Okay. John, yes. Yeah, I'm um, the yes. Robert, yes. yes. David, yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for Thank your you. patience. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for your patience. All right. Have a good night, everybody. It's, yeah, it's a good learning night. experience. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Bye-bye.